we're going to jump into section 4.1, energy and metabolism, and we're going to focus on getting some vocabulary and setting up a, a foundation for understanding these different processes so we can dig into them more deeply in the future sections. Uh, I want to suggest that you uh, plan to take quite a few notes with this. If you've already looked over this section in the textbook, you might even just pre-make a little outline because we're going to cover a lot of stuff in this chapter and it, it may be really helpful to have a nice set of notes at the end of it. All right, scientists refer to the flow of energy within living systems like cells as bioenergetics. Uh, within cells, complex processes involve step-by-step -step chemical reactions, some of which release energy spontaneously, uh, while others demand energy to be input. Uh, just as living organisms need to eat to restore their energy, cells must continually acquire more energy to offset the demands of the numerous energy-consuming activities, chemical reactions they're participating in. Um, so this collective set of chemical reactions within the cell, so that's going to encompass those that consume and produce energy. All of those together are known as uh, cellular metabolism. So let's consider the metabolism of sugar. So this is a kind of a classic example um, that's going to involve energy usage and energy production. So living organisms consume sugar. So sugar has uh, a whole bunch of carbon bonds that have a lot of energy in them. Uh, and this is produced um, by photosynthesizing plants. So during photosynthesis, plants convert carbon dioxide, so CO2, into sugars like glucose. And they do this using sunlight energy and they produce oxygen, but it's just a byproduct. You know, we tend to get focused in on the oxygen because it's so important to us, we have to breathe it. Um, but really, the purpose of photosynthesis, what it's doing is creating sugar, an energy molecule that the plant can use. Um, so this energy consuming process, or producing process, excuse me, energy producing process requires input energy, uh, primarily sourced from something called adenosine triphosphate or ATP. Um, so this, you can kind of think of it as the currency of the cell, uh, how, how energetically it pays to do things. Uh, conversely, energy storage molecules like glucose then get consumed um, to release their stored energy. So photosynthesis creates this molecule with all this stored energy in it, and then later it gets used up for other metabolic processes um, and releases that energy back into the system. Uh, to get the most out of that, that system does require oxygen. We're gonna talk about oxidative phosphorylation a little later. Um, and when we have to use oxygen to then break apart these carbon rings, these sugars, uh, we're gonna release carbon dioxide as a waste product. So around and around it goes. These formulas, um, if you remember from the previous slide, you know, the little, the little uh, formula, it's the reverse. And we'll, we'll talk about that more a little bit later. So these processes um, exemplify metabolic pathways where chemical reactions sequentially modify molecules to yield end products. Okay, that's a lot, right? So we take one thing and maybe we have to have, let's say, you know, we have to have sunlight, we have to have water, um, we have to have CO2. Okay, so that's what we're inputting. And then we need some ATP to get the reaction going. And that leads us to producing these sugar rings, okay? That's our end product, the sugar rings and then the oxygen as the, by, the byproduct with it. So sugar metabolism, right? It in, it's gonna include anabolic pathways, so that's constructing larger molecules. It might help you to think of like anabolic steroids help you build bigger muscles. Um, anabolic pathways are building things. And then catabolic pathways are breaking down large molecules into smaller ones. Um, so cat or you can think like cut, um, so they're breaking things down. When you build things, you need energy put in to build the stuff. When you're breaking things apart, you're releasing energy as you break them apart. So this represents right our anabolic, that's our synthesis, building something new. And then degradation, that's catabolic, when we're breaking it down. All of these are the, come together to form the metabolism of, in this case, sugar. Uh, enzymes which are proteins that catalyze reactions. So enzymes that allow reactions to happen uh, more efficiently or to happen at all sometimes, um, they facilitate these pathways, whether they consume or release energy. We still need an enzyme. Um, sometimes you have to feed energy into the system. Sometimes energy gets released. 